everybody, E here. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Dan E Cast with my co-host Dan. Say hello, Dan. We have a name this time. Yes, we actually have a name for the podcast or whatever this is. Before the last one, we didn't have anything. No, we were we were thinking of silliness. Uh, yeah. I can't even remember what we talked about at the end. But today we are talking about Pet Cemetery. We are going to be talking about the book. We're going to be talking about the uh, original movie. I think it's Mary Lombardo was the director. No, um, Mary Lambert. Lambert, that's Lambert. it. Mary Lambert. Uh, thank you for the fact check. Uh, and then the god awful Jason Clark version. Um, and then we might even talk a little bit about the sequel to the original one. We don't know, but I'm going to start right off with the main question: How did you feel about Pet Cemetery the book? I liked it. It was good. It didn't take the spooky Native American concepts that a lot of horror uses and make it too bad. It was like, it was fine. I liked it. So you're talking about the wind, the yeah. Wendigo. Yeah. Um, it's funny because in the in the Dark Tower universe, uh, well, at least I do in my Thursday Theories series, talk about how it's not actually the Wendigo, it's just what those characters thought was the Wendigo, and it was actually a thinny. Um, letting uh, demons and whatnot in from the Dark Tower universe, or the Prim as it is in the Dark Tower universe. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't know, if you're just joining us and you didn't watch the last episode, this is a uh, a podcast kind of deal with me, uh, E, talking to Dan, who is a newbie um, to Stephen King, and I am a lifelong fanboy. So... Uh, what there is going to be spoilers throughout. We waited until the end of the last episode <laughs> to actually talk about those spoilers. Uh, actually, before we even gave the spoiler warning, we talked about spoilers beforehand. But we'll try to stick to Pet Cemetery this time because um, we talked about what Doctor Sleep and The Shining in the yeah. last one. So uh, you liked it. The uh, now there was now right off the bat, you're talking about the Native American aspects. A lot of people got upset. You I can understand that. Well, you yeah. haven't seen It Chapter 2 yet. No. A lot of people got upset because of the Native American aspects in that one, so we can't talk too much about that. But people have gotten upset about, and there is a the ritual of Chud in, uh, in It, the book, that they don't do in the original It movie. Mm-hmm. We need to talk about that also. But, I mean, the book's 1,100 pages. I'm not sure if you want to climb that mountain or not. All right. Um... So let's get back to Pet Cemetery. Uh, the original book is one of my... Well, there is only the original book, but <laughs> the book itself is one of my favorite Stephen King novels of all time. It's in my top five easily. And one of the reasons it is is because it deals with grief so well. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to get too dark with this episode, but we recently had a, uh, a death in the family. My mother, Dan's grandmother, passed away. Um, the, the book deals with grief in a very heavy, heavy way. Because, uh, like, like I said, spoilers, halfway through the book, Gage, the, the, I think he's five or four or five years old in the book. I think he's like three. Yeah, yeah, I think he might be, I mean, I think he might be that young. Um, he gets ran over by a truck. Because he's still having problems talking. Yeah. Um, he gets ran over. Oh, it's, it's hard to, to judge because the movies age the, the kid a little bit more. I'm not, no, actually, it might, that kid might actually be three. I don't know. Anyway. But uh, Gage is very, very young, and he gets hit by a truck while the family's having a picnic. Leave no remains. Yeah. Um, one of the most important parts, the themes of the book, is dealing with grief. Or, as you know, burying your own. Um, to, to talk about that a little bit more, that's one of the things that I felt the, uh, the remake, the Jason Clark movie got so utterly wrong because he didn't have to go and bury uh, Rachel. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. Rachel just... <laughs> who was it? Ellie? Ellie yeah. went and buried her, right? Yeah. Um, that that remake is absolutely terrible. I know there's some bad acting in the original movie, but it's still, it's still pretty close to the book. What do you think? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I don't like it, but I don't dislike it. It's fine. The uh, the original? Yeah. Okay, so what what would you prefer... 
out of all three, let's leave the sequel out of this for a second. What would you prefer out of all three? Would you prefer reading the book again? Would you prefer watching the original movie? Or would you prefer watching the remake? I would prefer the sequels because the sequel <laughs> is crazy. The, the se- it's just so dumb. It's fun to just enjoy. Yeah, it's absolutely batshit when dude's sitting there trying to eat dinner <laughs> and he's got duct tape around his throat trying uh, to keep the food. Yeah, yeah I love Clancy Bell. He's great. Yeah. Um... So the original book is, of course, not ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it is. It is very, very dark. Yeah. Uh, one of the, one of the scenes that hit me the hardest was him actually digging Gage up. Yeah. Um, the coming to terms with that he was about to do it. I love. I don't think any either one of the movies got this right, but him coming to terms with he was actually going to do this. Yeah. Um, was one of the one of the darkest parts of the novel for me of course i mean other than the little boy getting run over by a damn diesel truck um what were some of your favorite parts in the book um i liked ellie a lot she was well written i liked the perspective coming from her and her reactions to different things gotcha um ellie uh there there's a lot of discussion about this um, especially when I did my Thursday Theorist on these books, uh, that Ellie had the shine. Yeah, duh. Yeah, um, because she she sees Pascal. Yeah. Um, Pascal, whatever she calls him. Yeah, um, she literally has the dream about uh, Louis. I got his name right this yeah, time. Not, not Louis. <laughs> Louis. Louis Creed. <laughs> she, had, she literally dreamt about him. Um, what, what did she dream? I don't know. I just know she... She I think she just had a nightmare. She, she no, I'm pretty sure the dream was like she she saw what he was going to. I think she tells do. Rachel about. You know, it's been so long since I read the actual book. I know in the movie that uh, she just tells Rachel something's going to happen. Yeah, and she's freaking out at the airport. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure she has a dream about what he's going to do. She doesn't know. No, she has a dream before he actually does it. I'm pretty sure. Oz, the great and terrible. <laughs> I, you know, it, as funny as that sounds, it is one of the scariest, like, part segments. When you, when you actually know the context yeah. for it, it's like, yeah. whew, yeah. oh, that's, that's, that's ugly. I yeah. don't, don't want to think I, about yeah. Oz, the great and terrible. No, <sighs> no. It's not good. All right, so um, here, here's an interesting question for you. Um, when you first saw the title of Pet Cemetery. Did you realize that there was a misspelling? No. No? <laughs> I'm stupid. No, no. It, I just corrected it in my brain. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's Pet cemetery. It's it's a cemetery with animals. <laughs> yep, that's normal. Well, well that's fine because uh, there, was, there, was a, there was a big discussion when the book first came out and whether or not the spelling was actually intentional. Whether or not this man who had you five... You read the book, you yeah, know that it is. Who what? had four other books. But, I mean, these are, these are people that heard about the book before it could be read. Oh, yeah, you okay. know. So, you know, you had this man who had published four very successful novels up to this point. You had Carrie, uh, you had Salem's Lot, you had uh, The Shining and The Stand, not to mention his uh, short story collection, Night Shift. People still thought <laughs> that it was a misspelling on his part. Um, there's there's also, that there is a little bit of, there's, there's something that lends credence to this. When they first uh, published... Creed. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, ba-dooms. Um, when they first uh, published Salem's Lot, they got the name of the, the, the father, the, the, the pastor, priest, whoever he is, uh, Father Callahan, they got his name wrong on the book jacket. Oh. They called him Father Cody. Nice. Um, and they also got the price wrong. <laughs> so, they, so they had to, the, the very first edition of the book, um, I can't remember how many are left right now, but that edition of the book is worth thousands, of course. But uh, it has the, I think it's six ninety five price tag instead of the seven ninety five. I could be wrong. If you know the difference, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Um, but they had to cut that, change the price, and they had to change the Father Cody to Father Callahan. Um, back to Pet Cemetery. Who was your favorite character throughout the book? I like Norma, but Ellie probably. Is that, that that's the uh, that's the maid that hangs herself, or who is that? Who's Norma? That's is, or Judd's, Judd's wife. wife? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Give me a second. Dan is the looking... maid isn't even in the book. Dan, yeah, yeah, she is. 
No, she's not. Is she? Wait, no. Okay, she's not a maid. She's just a babysitter, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, she's still in the book. That character is... Okay, yeah. Actually, she's very different. That character is... Not very is... different, but like, she's different. She's not the same. You know, it's funny because they actually merged Norma and the maid, yeah, which I yeah. can't remember her, for the original movie. Yeah. Which I thought was very... I very... didn't like that. I, I would have preferred Norma. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, but in um, if you don't know, um, Norma is in the the book for a very short period of time, right? Well, she's like ha- she's like I, I guess so. Isn't she isn't she alive when Gage dies? Yeah, I th- maybe I, I'm no, not- no, 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 because it was her, and then that was I'm young. Know, there was the it was the lead up. I'm pretty sure it's talked about in the book, but it's like first you have her who's not family but she's gotten pretty close to family and not only do you have that and then right after that you have gage i'm pretty sure see this is the problem with so many like reboot movies and offshoots you forget what happens i can't believe they didn't put her in the new one that's crazy uh i mean they completely they completely flip-flop what happened in the middle of the book too so um but that i mean we'll, we'll talk about that eventually but um, yeah, I do find it interesting that they merged the, the babysitter nanny or whoever. They yeah. merged that person with uh, with Norma. And Norma isn't in I'm either pretty sure one the of the movies. I name is Missy. And it's, yes. they keep the name Yeah, Missy. that's right. That's it's right. like uh, in the Heathers musical. They, they combine, which is actually pretty smart because musicals, you know, they're musicals. They combine um, the fat girl that gets picked on by the Heathers and... Um, the main character's friend, uh, Veronica's friend, they combine oh. her in the musical, and it's, it's, it was actually very well done. Not in the Pet Cemetery's case. But. <laughs> the last time I saw Heather's was when it first came out. Oh, I think I watch my Heather's a lot. I love my that. sister took me to go see it. Um, okay, so my favorite character in the book is Pascal. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I see p- that. Period. Over and done with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the. I, I, Pascal in in the book is such a subtle character. Yeah. Whereas he is like the whole horror element. Yeah. In yeah. in the in the movie yeah. up until a point. Like, the whole horror is is the death, and before it's like before him, there's even still in and before he dies, which he dies very early. But before that, there's still like at least for me, there's still already a bit of horror before he even dies and lewis has the sleepwalking it's just like you have this huge road and then it oh that's another thing um i like the separation literally between the creeds and what is it crandall yeah yeah crandall's. Judd, Judd, literally Judd crandall. you have the this new family new to the entire state And then you have this family who's been here their entire lives, separated by this huge road. I like how they're literally separated in that way. Oh, that's that's cool. I never even considered that. Um, of of course, this is this is horror one hundred and one. If you want to start off a horror novel, you take uh, someone from the outside and bring them into a new environment, um, and that is the easiest way to set up a horror story. Yeah. Uh, it's time and time again. I just got through reading Todd uh, Kiesling's uh, Devil's Creek, and that one, someone comes home. Um, it can be done well. It can be done very, very poorly. I think it's done well in Pet Cemetery. Yeah, yeah. Um, Judd is probably my second favorite character. I like him a lot. The, the yeah. way the book opens, it brings up uh, that Lewis was not expecting to find a father figure. That's the, yeah, the very I first chapter. Yeah, I like that a lot. That was... It go, was go it was well introduced, and you can feel it before he even says it. The the very first paragraph of the book says, you know, uh, Lewis Creed did not expect. I I don't have the book in front of me, but something like Lewis Creed did not expect to find a father figure so late in life. Yeah. Um. I I think that more so, and we're gonna be bouncing back between the book, the movies, and the sequel. Um. But one of the things that struck me so much in the book was the was the character the the character development between Lewis and Judd. Mm-hmm. The original movie got that. I didn't find any of that in the in the reboot, no, which is another thing no. that I hated because Judd was more interested in Ellie than he was in Lewis. That's how I felt. Of course, I've only yeah. seen it once. I've seen the original movie multiple times. I've read the book at least three or four times. Um, I still prefer the book 
over any of them because the original movie has some atrocious acting. Yeah. Uh, especially when <laughs> dude wakes up to find his feet muddy. <laughs> um, there, there's some bad, bad acting in that. But, anyways, back to back to the book. I want to continue on with the book. Uh, the defining moment of the book, of course, is when Gage gets hit by the truck and there's that separation of family. Mm-hmm. You have Ellie and Rachel go to stay with her pa- with, with uh, Rachel's That's parents. That's another thing. There's a lot of, not really isolation, but separation right. in this with the new family and the old family and then the separation in Lewis's family with, uh, what's her face, Rachel's family and then there's a lot of separation that i find i find that interesting especially for this story that deals with actually grief it, because, yeah, it's, the whole book is about separation yeah you're, it's about you're separation right. and like <laughs> separation isolation and how that like just happens during grief because yeah. everyone handles it their own way so they kind of go in there or some people go to other people but some other people like how rachel went to her family to deal with it kind of well, no, because he kind of irks her to go. Anyways, but I think um, she would end up going anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. Because he, it was just she was just waiting on his final approval. Yeah, because because dad punched him at the at the funeral. Yeah, cause it's interesting how there is so much. There's a good amount of characters, but there is a lot of separation between them. Where you have Lewis alone in the house, you have Judd alone in his house, you have Rachel off in another state. It's it's interesting, and I like how it takes the separation that grief can make while people are handling it, and it makes it physical. It's like it's not like you your family. It's a it's, personification yeah, of grief. Yeah, it's, it's an actual separation from those people. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like your family is all in like the same town, but like you're not visiting each other because of things going on. You're literally not even within the same community. Right. I, I like how it really takes that and runs with it. Yeah. Um, Ollie, I, I, again, you mentioned at the beginning of the Carrie episode that we did before that uh, Matilda and Carrie were pretty much the same plot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I never thought about that. You, they, they also, they both t- take place in schools, especially, it, too. It, this is true, but uh, what I'm what I'm getting at is I'm, I, I, never, I never looked at the separation. You know, Judd's across the street Lewis gets separated from his wife and kid. Not and the whole family is separated from Gage and Church. Yeah. At one point in time. Um, oh yeah, that's another actually, thing. Because may, they're the, undead, they're they're separated too because they have the spirit. Well, maybe the book. Maybe you're onto something. Maybe the book is more about separation than it is about. I, grief. I think it's about both because separation is kind of. Because a part even of the pet grief. cemetery, the two pet cemeteries oh, yeah. are separated yeah. as well. You have the Indian uh, ba- burial ground, and you have. Pet cemetery. Yeah. Um, it's wow. Okay. Um, I didn't expect to get that deep, but <laughs> well, here we are. Uh, it's fantastic. Very well done, Dan. Very. I saw well done. a comment that, uh, about my theory about why female authors, especially, can write such um, horrible female characters. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. I taught someone something. <laughs> I taught someone something. <laughs> I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they, there you go. There you go. Get away from the self defecation. De- defric- de- no. Self self defecation. Not for you know. a while. Self. De- I no no. Uh, anyways, yes, yes, you're very smart, and, and people are realizing All that. Right. Anyways, let's move on before we both get uncomfortable, because <laughs> um, neither one of us like compliments. Okay, come on. Yeah. Um. Okay. So back to Pet Cemetery. I think the final thing I want to talk about with the book is how the book ends. I think the the very oh, last yeah. lines yeah. of the book. And my buddy Cody agrees. Many people agree. It's the best final line of the entire book. Darling. Yeah. It said. Um, and it, I, I love the... It just, it's just three words, but it's... Well, no. Yeah. It said. Yeah. It's only two. Like, yeah. The first of all, the it. Yeah, exactly. Second of all, you never... I'm At least I never heard her or noticed her say... I never heard her call him darling before. Not I maybe like babe and stuff like that but I never heard darling that's another thing it's like first of all it, maybe she has called him darling in the book but you have that where never really hear, hear her say that it's out of character and then it yeah I it love said. that it's uh, not Rachel it is something else and yes. that's what I feel like 
both of the movies don't do a good job of explaining. And ironically, I feel like <laughs> the sequel does a good job of explaining that because you have, um, I forgot his name. He played Hank in Detroit Become Human. Um, the tall guy, cl- clan, clan, not cl- I... Brown, Mr. Brown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Brown, he's he's already a jerk to begin with in the movie, but then when he comes back, he's so goofy and animated, and I it, I find it funny that that movie, rather than the other two, displays how the burial ground changes people right. because if he go he he changes like that, it's like he goes from this abusive guy that's just generally horrible to this You're talking about strange, the sequel. Yeah, okay. to this strangely Clancy, Clancy Brown? Yeah, Clancy. Yeah. Uh, uh, to this strangely goofy and animated <laughs> character. It's like it doesn't represent it the same way the book did because the book made them like very strange, but it doesn't represent it the same way, but it still represents it well. It makes him goofy rather than like I don't know what word I'm looking for. Well, well, one of the things uh, the sequel, not the sequel, the reboot tried to do that with Ellie. It was too goofy. But it honestly. was goofy in the book. If you actually go back it and was. listen to Gage, yeah. he he he's all different kinds of cocksuckers and all different kinds of things. Yeah. He he says all different kinds of wild shit. It, yeah. And it that's was, the only part that I don't like about the book. Like the book a is a perfect try experience. It was hard, but yeah. I I could get behind. I, I it almost felt like the spirit of the burial ground is this 13 year old that's trying to mess <laughs> the with you 13 year old edge lord yeah that's what it feels <laughs> it's like it's not a kinda, wendigo I it's a 13 like year old edge lord <laughs> i kind of like how edgy it is just i i, 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 f- I found the, the parts with gage to be far superior in the original movie uh the yeah, book yeah i think the book was goofy i think the remake was goofy i of course think that the sequel is goofy yeah. But it's goofy for all the right reasons. Yeah. I mean, you got the dude <laughs> with the duct tape neck. You it's so so much, and it's like the, the dude making love to the dog there for a little bit. The wolf when they're in bed together, and he's with the, that. Th- th- there's some there's some parts in there that make you yeah. make you say hmm. Yeah. Um. But it's it's a fun experience. That's why I like it. Um. It's it's kind of like the rage, you know, carry too. You can't even be find that one. Nice in a silly. goofy she, way. She, that one was just She bad. grows like vines in her veins yeah. and shit. That one, you can't even enjoy it because it's goofy. It's <laughs> just plain bad. Alright, so uh, talk, talking about the entire book overall, um, I think Dan hit on some very good points, which is I think it's more about separation now that I, I, I'm talking to Dan about it. I think it's more about separation than it is about grief. Well, no, but of course, grief is about separation. Yeah, but, because it's more, but it's more of an emotional separation. Yeah, but there's more than just the grief in the book. Yeah, like you were talking about, there's but a separation I'm just saying, of the like, road. It's, it's um, it is. It's it's not more about grief than I than it's not more about separation than grief because in a way, separation is just another part of grief because. In grieving, you often separate. Some people will go to people for emotion, emotional support, but other people will separate it and deal with it, and then they'll be fine. So that separation is still a part of the themes of grief. But at the core, you have to have separation before you can have grief. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, because you have to lose something before you can grieve its loss. Yeah. I don't know. If you guys disagree, let me know down there in the doobly doo. Of course, uh, me and Dan will be should be down there uh, Sunday. Uh, should be down there talking to you guys. Uh, one of the things, an- another thing, the the last thing I want to talk about with the book, unless you have something else that you want to talk about. Um, there's a scene in the book with the with the the Wendigo. Or with what oh, yeah. Lewis thinks of as the Wendigo, with like yeah. it feels like the forest is alive, something's watching him. I love that scene. That uh, was me too. Wonderful. I love that too. I I never get like horror books don't really affect me just because I'm very visual, but that actually like creeped me yeah, out. That's one of the scariest parts of the book. Just yeah. him trying to go out there because he's alone. He doesn't have Judd with him this time, but also at the same time, it's like the spirit or whatever it is is trying to get him to stop yeah, yeah. which i thought was amazing um you have you have both the it's almost like taunting it's like hey you can go up here if you want but like if you're a coward like <laughs> <laughs> um it's 
it, it, but you would think that it would want him to come. Mm-hmm. It would want him to do this so that because there's a lot of theories that the thing in the woods is a thing that possesses the people um, when they come oh, back. Oh, I thought that was clear. I didn't know that was like a, I thought that was well, supposed to be it, not like a theory. Well, it it it's still not cement in the book. Okay, there's, yeah, there's no yeah. guaranteed, but there are people who think um, that. There is a different spirit because he's not actually to the burial ground. It's almost as if something is trying to scare him off mm-hmm. before he even gets there. So that's where people come to the crossroads of separating those two entities. You know, there's one for the good and there's one for the bad. There's one trying to keep him away and there's one trying to keep him, you know, pushing on and on and on. Um so what do you what do you think at the end of the day? I know you haven't read the Dark Tower series. That's kind of the part, the point of this whole discussion is talking to a newbie, a newbie talking to an old head. Do you actually think? I mean, you know the the Wendigo allure. Mm-hmm. What do you think is out there? Just speculate. I this is what I do with Thursday theorists. I just come up with odd bullshit off the top of my head. So you play theorist for a second. What do you think is out in the woods? Because of the actual. Wendigo stories and mythology. I don't believe that it's a Wendigo because the Wendigo is also about isolation in a way because of cannibalism. But it's it's about cannibalism. It's it, it's it is the same thing where it possesses the person who resorts to cannibalism. But I don't I don't believe that it's a Wendigo. I just believe it's just some mad spirit, evil spirit. Now, do you think that the Native Americans? Oh, I wish I could remember. It's not the me. I almost said me. Micmac. Micmac. Thank you. The Micmac Indians. Um, do you think that they knew about this, or do you think that it is something from their, let's say, Native American magic? Do I you don't... think they created, it or do you think that they just knew about it? I, they probably just knew about it, honestly. Okay. All right. So let's talk about these movies right quick, yeah. right here. Yeah. So the original one is lambasted all the time. For being utterly corny and goofy, I disagree. I still find it a hell of a horror movie. Yeah. Um, it's a very upsetting movie. Yeah. And I find it more of like a movie you watch to be upset and not a movie that you watch to get a scare. I don't really consider it a horror movie. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think there's more along the lines of dread and emotion than there yeah. is more like What would you horror. call it? Like a drama? Really? Yeah, it, it's it's a it, horror. It's on the it's on the edge. It's a horror it's it's, drama. it's definitely a horror drama because it's it's more about the characters than it is about yeah, the spooks. Yeah, same as like Carrie too. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's all Steve. I uh, I did a video about my top five unpopular opinions about popular authors, and I actually said that I don't think Stephen King's a very good horror novelist. No, no. Um, and the reason I say that is because all of his books are about characters. You can strip yeah. away the horror completely, and you still have a story. You yeah, still have you'd drama. Still have a wonderful. Right. You can take Story. all the supernatural, like Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, all these things that he did that aren't really horror people still like because it's always about the characters yeah. with him. And that's why I like him because I, I like, I, that's why I'm not a big fan of slashers. And yeah. when I do like slashers, I like things where it's like a Friday the 13th where it's like pretty good written characters. Like I like characters. I don't right. like just a story and that's why I like him so much because there there are characters and not just like shells. Yeah, they they're not cardboard cutouts. Yeah. Um they they're not just players on the stage to get things done. They feel like they're human beings. Yeah. Um and that that's a good point, you know, with even with horror novels like Hereditary is such a fantastic film because yeah. it's about the characters. Yeah. And that's um, also about grief. Right. Not not as much separation, but 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 I also and I don't want to get into the realm of elevated horror here, <laughs> but um, there's a huge difference between a horror drama like Pet Cemetery and let's say Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, Friday the Thirteenth, you're supposed to have fun. Uh, Nightmare uh, on Elm Street. I almost said before Christmas. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. You're supposed to have fun. Even yeah. Halloween to a point is supposed to be fun. Yeah. I mean, even in the original, the chick goes cross-eyed as she's being strangled, and you you gotta laugh. Yeah. Um. But those slasher films, I see that more like a roller coaster ride. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Where, whereas something like I don't even know what that's to why I don't it like to. Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, um, I love it, but hey, varying opinions and all that. Um, 
But then you have a completely different type of horror. I don't consider Friday the 13th horror. That's why it's called a slasher film. Yeah, I it's think, not horror. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a slasher. You're, it's meant to be fun. You're yeah. there for the blood, gore, blood, guts, and ass, as I like to call it. That's what, that's what you're there for. Whereas with something like Pet Cemetery, you were there to be creeped out. Or yeah. you were there to be emotionally upset. Yeah. Emotionally shaken to your core. That's why I like, um, bit very off track, but that's why I like, uh, me- I always say Mag 7 just to shorten it. It's, the cow- it's a cowboy movie. Uh, Magnificent, Magnificent 7. Magnificent 7, yeah. The end. I haven't watched the original movie, but the ending of the remake shook me, and that's why I love that movie. I haven't seen either one. I have it on DVD. I don't, ha- I don't, I don't have either um, one. What's his face is in it? <laughs> what's his face? Chris, it's the Chris guy- Pratt? Yes. He's in the remake, isn't he? Yeah. What are you talking about if you're uh, not the, the guy that's the, the dad of the chick from Stranger Things. Oh my oh. god. Ethan Hawk. Loa to Jersey. Okay, um, so back on track. We got to talk about the movies. We got to. So, the original film. I had Dan sit down and I said, you're going to watch this. Yeah. Uh, what were your initial thoughts after you got done? Because I had touted it as like one, an actually scary movie. Yeah. And we had watched several slasher flicks up until that point, and you were like, "Nah, nah, dude, this ain't it." But when we watched Pet Cemetery, how did you feel? It wasn't scary. Gotcha. It wasn't okay. It was a it it was okay. It was it was okay. Yeah. It did its role. It made me upset when it needed to, and. It was okay. I mean, it was not. It wasn't good. It was you, okay. Did I ever tell you the story about what happened to me the first time I saw it? I think so. I forgot the the peeing in the back of the car. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just to just to if you haven't seen my top five Stephen King books of all time, what happened with me is I was nine years old when uh, the original Pet Cemetery came out, and I just happened to peek between the the seats. It was my mother and her friend Andrita, and I just happened to peek between. I had to pee. I was going to tell her that I had to pee. I peeked between the seats right as Zelda came up out the bed. It was that scene. I literally peed all over myself. I'm like full bladder and everything. Because I'd had a soda. And I just completely filled up the, the foot well. Not filled up. It wasn't that much piss. Get your minds out of the gutter. It's cramped down here. Um, there was a lot of pee though. Okay. Um, so much so that my mother commented on the smell before she even knew what had happened. Um, so yeah, I peed myself. I was nine years old. Get off my back. Um, but that, that's one of the that's one of the most frightening things I've ever seen in my life. Still to this day, it is I, very scary. It's very well done makeup. It is that's and it's a dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dude playing that role. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying it doesn't look like a dude to me. It just looks like I don't know what it, it looks look like. Doesn't look like a human. Yeah, exactly. That's it the lo- point. Looks like an alien. Yeah. Some kind of freaky shit. They did shit. it very well to represent. I I honestly. I feel like they did a very good job representing what little Rachel might have saw. Right. Yeah, I mean, because... And it, what she still sees, because it, she saw that when she was so little. The camera angles. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. Yeah. They did so well with and that, then, and how they, she, like, she's looming over the camera almost. And they added the dumb waiter into the, the dumb... <laughs> See, I got... We're going to get to that in a second. And then she's all in the, the things, yes. like, ah. <laughs> yeah. She, the... There's so much wrong with to the the reboot, but we'll get there eventually. Um, one of the main things I liked about that there's a that people people riff on this all the time. They rip it apart, but the scene where Lewis grabs up Gage from the road oh, and just yeah. fucking screams. And I that's I, that was yeah. He's not a good actor, but that was a that good was scene. that was really that was really well hard. done. Like that that's my thing with this movie. Like. It's not a good movie, but it has good scenes, so that's why it's just okay. But on top of that, it's hella faithful to the book. Yeah. Like, it is extremely... Even at the very end... The faces end, at the end get me, though. I can't... <laughs> but even at the very end... Yeah. Now, Gage... I do like that the better, though. I like the faces rather than the Wendigo, because that's what I feel it is. I don't feel like it's the Wendigo, because the Wendigo is so very different from right. what is in those woods. I feel like it's some spirit that's been around for a while. Yeah. I, I agree. Um... But one of the things that I think that the book and the reboot got wrong was uh, the the kid coming back. I think Gage is the most terrifying in the original movie. Um, no fair and things like that. And so they yeah, call people like cocksuckers how, and whatnot. I, I like how he's... 
I like the book where it's so extremely edgy. It almost feels like this spirit is just taunting him. Yeah. But I do. I also do like in the first movie how he's this strange. It's like there's. It's like there's two spirits. They did that. They did that well. It's like you have this baby, but you also have this strange entity. So it's it's a very unnerving mix how he uses such, in the voice too how he's so childish but at the same time it's terrifying he's a very good creepy kid oh yeah uh, the, the kid and you were talking about what else he was in um, he was in New Nightmare yeah uh, what else was he in I he can't was remember. in something with Christina Hendricks and Chloe Grace Moretz that so was recent too wasn't yeah, it yeah 2015 they were both in Stephen King movies interesting who he, was Christi- I thought it was Jessica Chastain that was in no, it was Christine. Jessica Chastain was in It. It, right. Which Christina one? Hendricks is in, like, Mad Men and Good Girls. Yeah, but what Stephen King movie was she in? You said they were both... No, uh, Chloe Grace Moretz. Okay, well, okay, I get you. So the kid that was in Pet Cemetery and Chloe Grace Moretz. So I thought you were yeah. saying... Never mind. Okay. No, not Christina Hendricks. All right. Um, I don't want to do this any more than you do. We got to talk about the reboot. We, we got to. I Other... got so mad in that. The, the viewing experience from... Pet Cemetery to Doctor Sleep was so different because oh yeah. Doctor Sleep. She was saw him almost so back to back, by the way. Amazing. Doctor Sleep <clears throat> was like, whoa, look at all this great acting and the visuals and the sound. Wow, so amazing. And then you have Pet Cemetery. <laughs> you Dis- got the whole squad laughing. <laughs> Disney XD. Night night effects. I'm sorry. I watched a whole lot of Disney XD because Dan was into it. Uh, and I couldn't help but sit there and was like, this looks like an episode of Zack and Cody in the dark. What the hell oh is going on? Oh my god, you're right! Exactly. I was like, what the hell is going on here? This is such bad special effects. I was so mad. Jonathan Lithgow did an okay jo- job as Judd, but everyone else was so god awful. Uh, I liked the kid. The kid had bad di- gate. No, Ellie had bad directing. I feel like if she had better directing, she could have done a good performance. When she's honestly. laying in the bed with like her zombie makeup, and she's like, ah, I, was, I just, I couldn't. I was, I, I think I, I think I was so mad. I was so mad in the theater. I just sat back and like, fuck. Oh! I thought for sure it was going to be good. Like, It. We had gotten It Chapter 1, and it was amazing. Then we go push Shimajiri. And you got It Chapter, chapter two. 2. I was like, no, what is happening? Dr. Sleep saved it. Everything's going wrong. At least wrong. we have Dr. Sleep. And we almost didn't go see Dr. Sleep because of this. But then we, then finally, it was at the cheap theater. The entire theater. theater was empty, too, so we yeah. could just scream about it's it the like, whole time. I was like, oh, it's so good. And that was good because we couldn't shut up. I was like, yeah. this is so good. Why is this so good? I just I can't believe that we got three, we got, th- we got three Stephen King movies. I think in one year's time, at least and two. two of them at least were. like like fourteen months at least. But before 14, it 16. chapter one, we had the Dark Tower, yeah. which you haven't seen yet. No, and you don't know you wouldn't Not even know why it's terrible. Um, it's it's and a- then you had the stupid Hulu show too. Oh, Castle Rock. Okay, yeah. I liked it. We're in the minority. Was... <laughs> We're in the minority. It was I didn't... okay. It was fine. I didn't even finish. I didn't even finish our series Castle Talk with yeah. your mother because we were just like, no, yeah. I'm not, no. You were we're talking done. about the comments and you were just ignoring them like, mm mm. Yeah. Not they good. were like, oh, it's yeah. so good. He was so... deliberately ignoring you guys. I, I was deliberately yeah. ignoring you guys. Um, because yeah. I was just in there like, he doesn't care about you. I don't... <laughs> that, that's a lie. I'm joking. Um, but. Uh, I was talking to Shella about it. I was like, I don't even want to talk about this junk. <laughs> yeah. Like, that one episode that focused on Sissy Spacek was amazing. Yeah. But because it had Sissy nothing, Spacek, that's why. But it had nothing to do with the rest, with the rest of the rest show. Of the show. <laughs> it's like, they were like, oh, God, we fucked up. We so gotta have something good. It was like, just put Sissy Spacek in one yeah, episode. Just, It'll make it better. Yeah, it's okay. Just... Just give, just give her a whole episode. <laughs> Fuck it. You know how Breaking Bad had that one episode about the fly? Let's give Sissy Spacek <laughs> one episode. And they were like, that'll do it. And I think... Yeah, baby loves Sissy Spacek. <laughs> she was Carrie, didn't you she know? She was Carrie. She was coal miner's daughter. She's amazing. <laughs> She'll bring them in. She'll bring them back. It's like episode seven. They can't fuck and off after that. what's his face? Uh, Dill Skarsgård. It's like, look, we have two <laughs> Stephen King actors. Okay, sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, but we're back now. Um, Okay, so we're talking about Castle Rock and uh, Bill Skarsgård. Even at one point, Bill Skarsgård looked like he was like, I'm done with this show. I I imagine he was, probably. 
Maybe he didn't get the full script. I don't know. But it feels like... he did, It didn't feel like he put his all into it, which is unfortunate. But, but I also, don't blame him. It also feels like halfway through that they'd only like written so much. Yeah, and that's then they exactly were like, what it feels like. What are we going to do now? Put up Spacey, um, Spacey again more. It's okay. Yes. Oh, no, don't kill her. No, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> just put... Just put Pennywise in it more. Yeah, It'll just, be okay. just put more Pennywise. More Pennywise. People love Pennywise. He's it's actually okay. he's actually a race swap of the main oh character. It's okay. It's all right. But yes, um, Castle Rock. We we haven't even watched uh, season two, and I hear there's going to be a season three. Ugh. Talk about beating a dead horse. <laughs> I mean, um, and it's funny. But apparently, people actually didn't like season two. Well, it's funny because they made they tried to make old <clears throat> racist evil Annie Wilkes into a likable character. Huh. The, the it's you haven't read Misery yet. You need to read Misery. It's one of his shorter books. Okay. Um, but uh, the main character from that, uh, and we'll we'll do an episode on that too. We'll have we'll have you watch the movie and whatnot. Um, and also, I want to do Hunger Games next episode. I want to read Hunger okay. Games and then talk to you as you being an old head and me being yes, a newbie. I love Hunger. So we'll we'll go ahead and it's swap. It's happening that. right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Keep politics out of the show, E. No, screw you. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so. Dites are uh, politics. But, Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, going back to Pet Cemetery, we we get off on tangent, tangents. This is just how we do in real life. So it's like you guys are actually sitting here, listening to us bullshit back no. and forth. So the uh, we we talked about the absolutely terrible. I mean, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. The reboot. Um, and we even talked about the sequel because Dan likes the, likes the sequel. It's so dumb. It's, it's so dumb, but it's so much fun. And, of course, the only reason that Edward Furlong was even in the movie is because he was riding the uh, the Terminator 2 train and, you know, he got the role. So I don't I don't think we want to talk about that too much more. Last episode was 45 minutes. This episode's 42 minutes. Dan, is there anything else that you want to talk about Pet Cemetery, or anything else you want to talk about Stephen King related at all? Mm-mm. You don't know. Oh, um, the similarities between Rachel and Wendy. Why are they the same character? <laughs> Especially in their surroundings, too. They're, I think they're I both. S- I, I don't. I'm not trying to throw any shade at Tabitha King, but I'm both pretty sure that her? both. I'm that, pretty that sure both sense. of them because yeah. I've seen interviews with her, and she does rather sound kind of like both Rachel. Like they don't put up with too much bullshit from their husband, but they're still going to put up with some bullshit. Yeah. Um, yeah. and that's pretty much. Tabitha. I mean, you can't have a cocaine alcoholic husband for so many years <laughs> and not be able to put up with some bullshit. So I think both of them are. But of course, I don't know Tabitha. Yeah. As a I person. just noticed, not only are they as characters extremely similar, but also in their surroundings, they have their husband who's doing God knows what. They have their shining kid. You do they realize that these... you're kind of talking about me here because I'm an author too. It's like you got. <laughs> <laughs> you got their husband who knows who does God knows what <laughs> because at least in The Shining he's an author, yeah. right? I, that, I I find that funny, but go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Uh, you, husband's doing God knows what and going a little crazy. You got their shining kid. Uh, you got this weird environment that's probably haunted. Yeah. 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 Definitely haunted. <laughs> Not no. There's no probably. It's, but I mean, it's haunted. Th- that's pretty much every single horror. Thing that involves a family. Yeah. When you think about it, because you got it in city. I mean, we could go down the list. Amityville Horror. We could go yeah. way back to yeah. the way back. And oh my god! Find, all the female characters are the same. This is so unfortunately. Good. Oh my god. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's and, why I like the and Last of Us. That's continued on into new horror too, because yeah. Paul Tremblay's Head Full of Ghosts has like all three female characters, both sisters and the mother, are pretty much the same exact person. Eesh. Yeah. That's why I like The Last of Us. Instead of the, usually in horror, the caring, tending, like, parent, very parental character is a woman or a mother. But in The Last of Us, it's Joel, a very man. <laughs> Got his beard. Sorry. Joel <laughs> full of pudding. Um, I, <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. I, I couldn't help it. Uh, it's, that's an inside joke. I do apologize. If you don't want to, if you don't have anything else to say about Pet Cemetery, I guess we're going to wrap it up here. Are you cool wrapping it up there? Yep. Okay. So, uh, 45 minutes for both episodes. I mean, that's kind of weird. Yay. My OCD is happy. My OCD is happy. So, until next time, I have been E. You have been you. Dan, please say goodbye. No. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye.